Good morning. Today we're going to walk through my eight general suggestions for the free response questions of any AP physics exam. AP is a registered trademark of the College Board, which was not involved in the production of and does not endorse this product. Here we go. Hey guys. Hey Bob. Uh, hi Bob. Flippin' Physics. Number one, before you start solving any of the problems, read through each one of the free response questions. After you have read all the free response questions, then answer them in the order from the one that you are most confident that you understand to the one that you are least confident that you understand. That way you'll know you'll answer the ones that you understand and it'll leave you more time to, to work through the ones that are more difficult for you. Doesn't that just end up wasting time? No, Bo, it actually doesn't waste time. What it does is it makes you more efficient with your time. Second one, write legibly. This one is especially difficult for me, but it's an important one because if the AP grader who doesn't know you at all can't read what you've written, then they can't grade it. It's as simple as that. If for some reason you have a particular letter or something like that that you have a hard time writing down, then give the grader a legend. For example, on the AP test, sometimes they use a capital M and a lowercase m to describe two different masses. I have a hard time distinguishing between a capital and a lowercase m when I write. Therefore, I would give them a legend that was capital M is equal to mass 1 and lowercase m is equal to mass 2, and then I'd use mass 1 and mass 2 throughout the problem. Yeah, your handwriting is pretty terrible, Mr. P. <laughs> yes, I know, but I do my best. Number three, organize your solution and label all the parts. It is very frustrating for me when I'm grading my students free response questions and I can't figure out which part of their solution goes with which part of the problem. So if you're working on part B triple I, then label it B triple I. And if you didn't move left to right or up to down because it just didn't work out that way, then give little arrows indicating the order in which you did stuff or, or label them with numbers or something. Basically, you need to make sure that the grader knows the order in which you did stuff and which part of your solution goes with to which part of the problem, please. Number four, show all your work. Partial credit is paramount to your grade. The solution is much more important than the answer. If you look through how the free response questions are graded, you will see that points are awarded for individual steps through the problem, and that those individual steps are generally worth more points, many more points, than just the answer itself. So please, I implore you, I beg you, show all your work. I, psst, Billy, I think Mr. P is losing it. Actually, I think he lost it a long time ago. What does that really mean, show all your work? <sighs> Showing your work means that you start by listing all of the known variables. You use subscripts when necessary. If you're going to use an equation, you start by writing down that equation, and then you use the equation. If you're going to use a second equation, you write down that second equation, and then you clearly solve that equation and come to an answer which you clearly identify as the answer. That is what I mean by showing your work. Okay, Mr. P. Thank you. I got it. Number five, do not break forces in free body diagrams into components. It is a small but very important thing that your free body diagrams or force diagrams are answers. So you do not break those forces in your first free body diagram into components. You will, of course, need to break forces into components, and when you do so, you should draw a second free body diagram and break the forces into components on that second redrawn free body diagram. Number six, answer every part of every problem. 
If you don't know how to solve a particular part of a problem, then guess. But don't multiple guess. Don't put down a bunch of different guesses because then you're guaranteed to get it wrong. Uh, if you leave it blank, then you're also guaranteed to get it wrong. But if you give a single guess, a single guess solution, then you at least stand a modicum of a chance of getting a few points. Modicum? A modicum is a small amount or small quantity. Oh. Plus, sometimes part B has nothing to do with part A and can be solved independently. And sometimes you'll solve part C incorrectly, but you solve part D correctly using that incorrect answer for part C. And you can still get points for part D, which you solved correctly, even though you have the incorrect answer for part D. But again, the solution is correct for part D, and you can get points for that. Because of course, the solution is much more important than the answer. Number seven has to do with the fact that dimensions are your friends. friends. And considering that dimensions are your friends, please always put the correct dimensions on your answers. Number seven, dimension your answers. That's right, I'm a dimension a verb. Dimension your answers. Nice. Number eight, leave algebra heavy solutions for later. Sometimes a part of a free response question has just a lengthy algebra portion to it. Uh, and my suggestion is that you actually stop and go to the rest of the test and solve the rest of the physics on the test and come back to that algebra portion if you have time. Because the truth is, this is an AP physics test and you wanna be able to answer as many of the questions as possible showing that you know how to do as much of the physics as possible. And sure, if you have time, come back and solve that algebra portion, but really show you know how to do the physics first. Those are my general suggestions. Ladies and gentlemen, people, thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. I'm pretty nervous about the exam. For those of you who want more help studying for the AP Physics C exam, uh, FlippingPhysics.com has a whole bunch more of my videos which should help you out. Please visit. Thanks again.